Welcome to today's presentation on CPIC Central 3.0, an automated solution for capital planning and investment control, brought to you by the Project Management Institute, Washington, D.C. chapter, and Robbins Joya. My name is John Hughes, and I'm the Vice President of Technology Solutions at Robbins Joya. For all the slides, visit the PMI, Washington, D.C. chapter webpage. Portfolio Management Optimization Engine. We have the ability to view the entire portfolio of investments, and you'll see that the Renewable Energy Upgrade Project has been added into the Office of Enterprise Architecture with its cost, its risk, and its strategic value, and the type of project that it is, all included in the system already. As part of selection, we want to optimize the entire National Demonstration Agency, so we select the highest level of the portfolio, we click the optimizer, and we start the optimization process. The optimization process takes in data from a few different places, does some mathematics on it, allows for some subjective manipulation, and then produces the optimal bundle of work for you to do. First we look at the business drivers and try to prioritize them. This is called business driver prioritization, and we do this via a pairwise comparison chart. Next we'll go through and see how projects compare to the same strategic values and decide which are the most important projects and which are the least important projects. So let's get started. As I indicated, first thing we need to do is load, uh, we're going to load a previously populated uh, matrix for pairwise comparison, okay? You'll see on the left-hand side we have the seven strategic drivers and also across the top. You'll note that um, we're doing a pairwise comparison between those two, so if you look at this one, you would read this at strategic management of human capital is strongly less important than competitive scoring, and you'd read them accordingly. For instance, competitive scoring is extremely more important than better research and development. Okay, now this is kind of like a wizard. All we have to do is click Next. And we're quickly told which of the business drivers are most important. You'll note that competitive scoring is at 37%, the most important one. And least important is strategic management of human capital. Let's go ahead and hit Next. Now, we've seen on the left-hand side a list of all the projects. And across the top, we have our strategic drivers. And in this heat map, you'll see all the data that we populated in the bottom left-hand side of that form that I showed you previously. This could be used by an investment review board, and actually the data can be tweaked right here by, by using the drop-down to adjust the mappings to strategic value. Additionally, this map can be used to find you know, people who are uh, maybe lazy. <laughs> For instance, the accounting upgrade is extremely important. Uh, you know, that's probably not accurate. And likewise, if you had a column full of nuns and lows, you might reconsider your strategic driver as, and its importance to the organization. So right here we can start making decisions and affecting our portfolio. When we hit next, we actually see uh, the project valuation. How uh, do the projects rank up? Okay, and as to no surprise, the accounting upgrade, which is extremely important across the board, obviously rises to the top. And down here at the bottom is the NDA Telecom, which had low, relatively low alignment. Clicking next, we want we want to start doing some what if analysis on this portfolio. What we'll do today is a, a simple what-if analysis based on cost. So in this list of projects, you now see the cost of each project, and you see that if you did all the projects, you would, it would take almost $60 million, $59.88 million. Now, most of the time, we don't get the exact budget that we want. So what, what might we do? Start with last year's budget of $35 million. So let's type 35 and hit Next, and we now see that for $35 million, certain projects we can still do, and certain ones will have to go away. We still maintain 80% of our portfolio value, which is still pretty heavy, considering we have nearly half the investment that it would take to do the whole item. Now, suppose we get $5 million in flux in cash, maybe from a stimulus or a TARP funding. Change it to 40, run a different scenario, and you see that the $40 million scenario raises it up to almost 86% of our portfolio value. That's pretty good. Again, two-thirds the investment and 85% of the portfolio value. So, we need the ability to tweak this though, right? This has been all mathematics and very uh, objective. So, what we want to be able to do is use a functionality called Force In and Force Out under the Optimization menu. And here we've added the Force In and Force Out column. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to force in some projects. This one, for instance, at 5.4 million hasn't been selected at all. You'll note, if we force it in with green, and then maybe this project up here that's been selected for all of them, we'll go ahead and force that one out. It's been selected every time. 
and then let's hit next. And for $35 million, with force in, force out enabled, we now have seven, nearly 70% of our value. So again, using this tool set, you can run portfolio calibrations and what-if analysis much more regularly and frequently in your organization, perhaps even quarterly or monthly, to see how impacts of new funding and new project and new investment ideas affect your organization. Now, we would commit this scenario uh, and synchronize the data between the project portfolio server system and the project system and we're good to go. So returning back to CPIC Central, going back into the workspace you can see that the portfolio analysis step has now been completed and we still need to go and, and knock out a few other things as part of our selection process so let's get going. Remember the purpose of this particular example of the solution we built is to work with OMV 300 and Exhibit 53. So we need more data obviously to do that. What we've done is abstract the sections of the OMB 300 business case into multiple smart documents. Now, what's a smart document? You saw me use one earlier. The risk questionnaire is actually a smart document. The smart documents allow users to use the familiar Microsoft interface to enter data into the system. Since the documents are encoded using XML, we can then process them and treat them as data stores. So, by abstracting the OMB 300 sections into multiple business cases, we can actually improve the accessibility, you know, improve the configuration management of the documents, and put the documents in the hands of the people who need to fulfill on those sections. Also, we can use workflow to consolidate all the data back into one business case, creating the wagon wheel, which is the business case, with the business case at the hub, collecting data from multiple systems. <coughs> so. For instance, here's one of the documents, it's called the overview document, one you're probably all familiar with, but it collects other basic data about the investment. You'll see we have the unique identifier here. Um, we've got the, uh, some other descriptions and dates in here. When we save this document, it goes into the system again and it stands out here in the project document library and waits for somebody to run an OMB snapshot, which we're going to do now. Normally, you'd have to submit and probably do multiple documents, investment, you know, overview documents, enterprise architect doc documents, or in value documents, etc. But we just did one for today. If we go ahead into the generate OMB, click that. And now we are told that we have to click this link to generate the OMB 300. So this is going to run an OMB 300 snapshot. It allows you to run this anytime. So you can see which sections are getting done and which sections are not getting done. You might use this for part of your scoring process to ensure that your OMB 300 business case gets approved. But we'll go ahead and run the workflow, and the document comes up, and the data that we've entered in the various documents has now been posted into the section. And you have access to all the sections of the document right through here. Okay, so that's nice. We've got the OMB all, all generated. We'll assume the sign-off has been done and reviewed. And let's go ahead and consider selection complete at this time. However, the last part of our demonstration is going to be on the Exhibit 53, so let's click over there. CPIC Central. Since the Exhibit 53 is a, is a summary of all the investments in the system, we hit this from the CPIC Central homepage. Again, if you remember in the I want to menu, you had the ability to generate an Exhibit 53 report. So what this is going to do when I run this uh, workflow is it going to go out through all the sites on our system and it's going to collect all the OMB 300s and pull the exact data out that's required to formulate and format the Exhibit 53. So let's go ahead and do that. As the workflow runs, it populates a Microsoft Excel document encoded again with XML. Let's go ahead and click it. Let's go ahead and open up the Exhibit 53 so you can see what it looks like. Now, this is the exact format that's required by the OMB and it's ready to go. You can ship this right to OMB and be uh, confident in your data integrity. It's all been pulled. Uh, since you have single data entry, you don't have to do any double keying and automate the creation of this document. Okay, so that kind of concludes the, uh, the whirlwind tour, uh, if you will, of going through the submit, select phases of the portfolio management process, including the OMB 300 generation and Exhibit 53 generation. Well, I want to thank you for today. And I would gladly accept any questions through my email, john.hughesatrobbinsjoy.com. Please feel free to reach out to me. My phone number is 631-723-1174. And have a great day.